Uh, welcome back, boys and girls, to the MadCenter.com. Um, I I know I've been away for a little bit, uh, but now I'm back. Okay, I also know that I'm aware that you have set for your November paper two accounting recently. I think it's sometime last week. Um, my students have told me what came out actually. Well, what type of questions did come out? I hope all of you have set for this paper have done well or reasonably well. Okay, uh, anyway, that's the past, that's finished. So you still have one more paper to go. And uh, this time I thought that at least I'm back and I'd like to do a couple of revision questions uh, to help you uh, in this coming paper one of your IGCSE accounting, okay? Um, okay, so I actually, uh, for my own students, I gave them a lot of tips about how to, the frame of mind, how to prepare for paper two. I think next time I'll talk about it uh, when I remember to uh, do more revision questions for paper two, okay? But for paper one, uh, briefly, you know, paper one questions, you have 35 questions to do in a very short time. I think it's one hour, 15 minutes. Please, please, please attempt all questions, okay? Do not uh, leave it to last minute. So as you do, you shape your answers. Uh, I say this because during invigilation, I saw uh, how, how different students handle it. So remember, attempt every uh, single question. Uh, do not leave any question uh, blank, okay? Uh, if you really are not sure, at least eliminate the impossible answers and uh, zero in on the uh, best of two answers, let's say. Huh? So good luck to you for that paper. Uh, and in the meantime, let's do some revision questions, okay? Remember what I said, attempt every single question in that set of 35 questions, which you are allowed one hour, 15 minutes, and do check, okay? Uh, it's very important. Uh, it takes up about at least 25% or more of the whole uh, marks, all right? So remember, uh, do your best, okay? Let's start. Uh, here are some of the questions that I've done uh, previously, and I quite like this particular set of questions. I thought I'll do some with you, okay? Okay, let's see. Huh? Let's choose a nice color. Okay, red. I'm very partial to red. Okay, here. It says, okay, the first question. Oh, sorry. The tablet is turned the other way around. Okay. So my school has gone back to face-to-face. -to -face, so, uh, so most of the time, I'm no longer on the Zoom. Okay, never mind, let's go. Let's look at this question, okay? Uh, Hall, A Hall. A Hall, that's the person's name, be Arthur Hall. Let's say buys $450 worth of goods on credit at the three and one third percent discount and two and a half percent cash discount. Now trade discount is automatically given to you uh, so that you can make some money, uh, you as the uh, seller, right? From when you buy your goods from your supplier. Two and a half percent cash discount is given to encourage prompt payment. So that depends really on uh, the terms and conditions between the seller and the buyer, okay? Okay, so what amount will he pay if he settles his account within the agreed limit? So let's say for a simple example, let's say the terms were, terms was 30 days. We were given 30 days and if we pay in less than or within the agreed time, okay, let's say if you pay within 30 days, you get to take off two and a half percent from the amount that you owe. So what amount will he pay if he settles? So presumably we are paying within 30 days. So therefore, the amount that that person is going to pay will be, first of all, let's calculate it less a net of 33% uh, trade discount. I hope you know how to do this. All you have to do is take 450 times 66.67% uh, and you find that the amount is actually 300, some basic maths here, okay? 450 times 66.67% or 66 and two third percent will give you this. So if you pay after 30 days, uh, you still have to pay the full amount of 300. But because you pay within 30 days, let's say within the terms, the special terms given, you can take out another uh, two and a half percent discount from this $300. So $300 less two and a half percent or $300 times 
97.5% means that the amount will come up to 292.50. Okay, quite clear. Uh, no problem here. Okay. Be very careful, read the question carefully. Uh, next one, Jane White was charged bank interest. Which source document should be used to record this transaction? Obviously, bank interest will all be seen in the bank statement. Not the check receipt, not the counterfeit, not the invoice. Obviously, it's in the bank statement. Okay. Okay, no, this one, I think there's no ambiguity. Okay, bank statement will have all the... Bank statement is a document issued by the bank. Monthly, it depicts all the uh, transactions, payments, uh, and money in uh, deposits into your bank, payments out of your bank account, uh, interest charges, uh, all the charges by done by bank direct debit, standing order, instruction, etc. Okay, so the next one, cash of three hundred is withdrawn from the bank for business use. What is the double entry to record this transaction? Now let's take a look at this. Cash is withdrawn from the bank for business use. So this has nothing to do with personal drawings. So remember, I always tell my students the basic rule of double entry. Here, obviously, two accounts are involved, cash and bank. The rule is cash withdrawn from bank. So money goes up from the bank and money comes into the cash account, which is 300. So hence, the entry, remember the golden rule, this is called golden rule. Anything that loses value, account that loses value, you credit. Any account that receives value, you will debit. Hence, uh, the best answer is to debit cash and credit bank. Okay, now before I forget, uh, do uh, if you like what we do, uh, do support us and give us, encourage us, and check out all our courses for maths, accounting, physics, A-levels, IG level, uh, IGCSE, at Excel, for both A levels, IB, etc., on our website, the Med Center. Okay, our website is www.themedcenter.com. Okay, we find lots of stuff there, very intensive uh, teaching of our courses uh, on videos and PDFs uh, to prepare students from all over the world to take the exams. Okay, so you can be at home, you can use our courses to take you through the exam, you can use it as support material, extra resource, but really our courses have been used to prepare students from various parts of the world. And then they go in and sit for the exam. Okay, so give us a like, share, subscribe. On our free demo site, there are plenty of uh, promos there, videos you can see for all the courses, maths, physics, accounting, uh, especially maths, okay? Okay, now uh, let's go on to the next one. The following information, uh, it's available for business. What is the return on capital employed? This return on capital employed is a very important ratio. It measures profitability. And paper two, this time there's a lot. There are always, uh, I feel that there are always common questions that they ask on ratios. This is a very, is one of the very important ratios. Uh, it's the, sometimes depicted as ROCE in a short uh, form. Okay. Now ROCE, there are, I think, at least two or three methods to calculate return on capital employee, the best one actually for ratio of ROC is profit before interest, okay, over capital employee. Now, uh, you have to look at the exam questions. If the questions, if the exam question do not give you a profit before interest, or they don't tell you this is the profit uh, for the year, and then this is the interest element, then I'm afraid you just have to use the profit for the year, okay? But really, this is the best one. I explain to my students why. Because when you, uh, this is the best way to measure profit before interest, okay, uh, over capital employed. But if you don't have it, then you use profit for the year over capital employed. Now, what is denoted as capital employed is really the capital, as in your capital account, which consists of the opening capital plus profit for the year plus additional capital less drawings to get the closing capital. Basically, you take the closing capital, all right? Plus, do not forget non-current liabilities. What are non-current liabilities? Things like mortgage, loan, bank loan, long-term loan and not overdraft, please. Uh, debentures, all right? Those are called non-current liabilities. You take capital plus non-current liabilities to get your capital employed. So in this case, do I know the profit 
no, uh, I will use this one, profit for the year. Okay, so first of all, to find profit for the year, I'll take the revenue, which is 76,000, and I need to find less the cost of sales, 35,500. And that would, and then uh, I also have to less off expenses, which is uh, how much? Uh, 28,800. And I get my profit for the year, which is um, 11,000. 700. Let me just check that quickly. Okay, 76,000 less 35,500, which is 40,500 less 28,800. Yes, 11,700. So my calculation is 11,700 over the capital employee of 92,000 times 100%. That will give me 12.7%. Okay. And we are done. Okay, so these are four different types of questions. Just some practice for you. Uh, some last minute help for your uh, paper one of your IGCSE accounting, which is coming up next Thursday, I think, on the tenth. Right. Uh, in the next video, uh, do uh, do check us out. I'll continue with some more questions. All right. I like to keep the videos short so you learn something, you're fresh, and then you go on. Okay. I see you again in the next video where we'll continue with this. All right, so do check us out at our site, themedcenter.com. Give us a like and share with your friends. All right, see you. See you soon.